Welcome back to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise of Finchingfield. We are getting close to the end of the year, and with that comes the celebration of all of the holidays. Whether you celebrate Christmas, both the religious and the secular, Hanukkah, Los Posados, Diwali, Kwanzaa, Solstice, or any of the many other celebrations that happen at this time of year, this is the time for family, singing, gift giving, and feasting. Or at least sending packages in the mail, sitting on your couch in your pajama pants, and drinking eggnog while watching Elf. My middle kiddo, Cam, is 19 years old, and over the years has asked me a number of times to make things, sometimes challenging my abilities, and going in areas that I never thought I'd go. I mean, have you ever had a kid say, Mom, I'd like to be a crab for Halloween. Can you make me a crab costume? And I said, uh, okay, yeah, and I did. This year for Christmas, she asked me if I would make her a piece of weaving. And that just warms my heart, that she appreciates what I do and the things I make. So I told her to go and select a pattern, and she dug around and came back with one that I've never done before. And it's period. So I'm really excited to do this piece for her for Christmas and to show you how to do it. This piece comes from Mom in Denmark. In 1868, a farmer began digging in a pile of dirt near his house, in Mammon, near Viborg. He came upon a richly furnished grave, which has become known as the Mammon grave. The man found inside the grave was buried during the winter of 970 and 971. And as you might have guessed, he was a man of great importance. He was dressed in an expensive red and purple garment made out of silk with embroidery in red and blue. He had a ceremonial ax with inlaid silver decoration and wax candles. Wax, of course, being a sign of wealth because most candles during that time period were made out of animal fats like tallow. Beeswax were not used for everyday candles. He lay on a bed of down cushions in his chamber grave. Two additional axes were laid at his feet, and other objects found with him include a bronze bucket and several other objects. Given the fine quality of all the furnishings that were with him, they believed that he may have been in the inner circle of King Harold Bluetooth. He ruled as king from 958 to 986, and he was the king that introduced Christianity to Denmark. Lisa Rader Knudsen wrote a paper on the subject, Det Ulna Brikvavid Bond fra Mammengraven. She describes it as having 17 cards. The two outermost cards are four woolen threads, and the inner 15 cards had two wool threads and two linen or some other vegetable threads that had deteriorated. Of those 15 threads, the five middlemost threads were a different color than the rest. That's interesting. I suspect, based on what's written here, that this was probably another brocaded pattern, but a pattern has been done to do this as a skippable weave. So while the original piece had about a half a dozen different motifs on it, we're only going to focus on one, and it's in the lower right corner of this picture. So grab your 17 cards, two or three colors of yarn, and your pencil, and we'll get started. All right, we're ready to start working. Make sure that your Tension bar is all the way in the starting position. I've got my yarns in my Lazy Kate. Um, I'm almost out of this black yarn, so I've got the extra spool at the ready. I've got my pattern, 17 cards, my very sharp scissors, always important, and a cup of tea, because tea. Oh, I do need to take the sticker off this purple. So that those are ready to go, we're going to start with black. Leave a nice long tail, good three, four inches. Pinch it against the peg and go all the way around all of the pegs from top to bottom. Around the lower front peg, the tension bar, and the upper front peg. Again, okay, you may not be able to see it from this angle, but there are two pegs in the front. Second string, same as the first, following the same path. Third string. And the 
export stream. Scoop these back, they're about to fall off the pegs. And there we go. All right, oh, cut the fourth string and card number one. By the way, these cards are cardboard, these are not the plastic ones. I don't remember where I got these. You know, when you're the local tablet weaver and somebody has tried tablet weaving or gotten some supplies and they can't remember where they got them but they're not interested in the craft, everything ends up at my house. So I ended up with these cards and there's only about 20 of them. So I was waiting for a project that had fewer cards so I could try them out. They're um, a little bit thicker than the commercially made ones, uh, and, but they're a little, they're quite a bit smaller than those commercial ones. So I think these are actually going to be really useful to use. Couldn't tell you what kind of cardboard they're made out of. They're, I think they're a little bit thinner than uh, beer coasters, if that gives you any idea. But they're heavier than poster board. I don't know. It's good to experiment with different things. All right, so this one, the front of the card is the, card, the side that I've labeled, A, B, C, D, clockwise. And it's going to face me, so... The letters will face me. Uh, S threaded will go through the left side of the card. These holes are a little smaller. That's going to be interesting to get used to. All right. Now, pull, pull all of your strings taut. Make sure that there's nothing snagged anywhere along the way. Surgeon's knot twice over. Left over right twice. And right over left once. Pull it tight. And the knot is secure. Now, one thing I'm going to show you. There's a couple of things I'm going to show you. First of all, um, this is the, the path that the strings take. Notice that none of them overlap, they don't crisscross, and I just follow them in an odd, you know, logical order from top to bottom. And, whoa, I, I did this in the last video. Um, this string is not tied to this peg. It's just tied around the peg. This is a completely circular warp, and as I work, once the weaving advances up, this will all shift around the pegs as I finish. So, very loosey-goosey. All right, so we're going to shift all of these back, and we're going to start warping up card number two. Again, all black. This piece that I'm doing is a Christmas present for my middle kid, my daughter Cam. And she asked for this pattern and asked for it to be done in purple and black. So there's not going to be a lot of contrast between the two colors, but it's still going to look really pretty. I asked her how much in length she wanted, and she said, um, enough for a keychain, maybe a little more. I said, yeah, we'll make a big piece. And... Um, you can figure out what to do with the rest. We can make your belt, or we can make your purse back, or purse strap, or we'll figure out something. And last thread for card number All right, card number two. Again, these are thicker than I'm used to. So, okay, is this, uh, card number two is Z-threaded, so it'll go through the right side of the card. Yep, 
that these holes are really small. And that's number two. So the rest of these are, except for the next, the last two border cards. Oh, there's only 16. Why was I thinking there's 17? Huh. Brain. Okay, so 16 cards. So the rest of these are two threads per card because it is another skip hole weave. So take the purple and the black at the same time. Hold those against the front peg. Put my finger between the two threads so they don't twist around each other and thread them at the same time. And yes, if you're using four different color threads and using uh, four threads per card for any pattern, you can do all four threads at once if you want to. C threaded, which is the front of the card or the right side of the card. A is black and C is purple. Like always, twice over and then once. And this repeats for the rest of the work. And there, oh, the, the S and Z does switch. In a few minutes. So let's get to that point and I'll, oops. Card number four, B is black and Z threaded. D is purple. Card number five. So this is going to be a pretty quick warp for this one because it's skip hole and it's 16 cards, not 17 like originally reported. Uh, card number five, B is black, but it's S threaded. So we're going to go through the back side or the left side of the card. Okay. Left over right twice, right over left once. Card number six, A is black, oh, but we're isolated.
All right, so here is the problem. Didn't think about that. I gotta find a different pencil or a skewer. All right, it's a little finer than what I need, but I think it'll work. It's not a knitting needle. It is actually a wooden skewer for cooking, I think. I don't remember what I had used it for before, but today it's gonna hold the cards. Hmm, okay, so first thing I gotta do is arrange the cards so that all the numbers line up. Because this is a skip hole weave, the cards are gonna want to skew this way and that way. So we'll need to line them all up. I've already marked all the edges blue, so that's actually an easier way to do it. Just look for the blue edges. That's the home position. And in the home position, you will have A and D at the top of the deck. All right. I'm going to stick our skewer in there. It's a little squirrely, but I think it'll do. All right, so you're going to put your hand through the shed, which is the opening between the top threads and the bottom threads, and you'll pull your tail through and nestle it in there with a light, nice long tail, and you're going to leave about two fingers width from the line of knots to where your thread is. And then you'll turn all your cards forward. You can leave the stick in there for a quarter turn. Pull the tail backwards through the shed and then put the shuttle forwards through the shed. Those of you who follow along frequently know that that kind of anchors the thread in there so it won't unravel. All right, we're gonna pull the skewer out, turn another quarter turn forward. Something feels askew in the threads. Maybe it's me. Nope, that's okay. Okay, all right, well, I guess that's fine. All right, pull your shuttle back through, nestle it in there, another quarter turn forward, back through the shed. Now at this point, you can start pulling your threads in. You can pull the tail, pull the loop, doesn't seem to want to grab quite yet. That's okay. We'll get there. Pull, pull, pull. And one more quarter turn forward. Now we're back in the home position. We've done one full rotation all the way around. Now this could be a really fun pattern. I think you'll just end up with little zigzags through here if you just keep going that way. By the way, I decided to call this piece the Mom and Mia because as I was threading the, the cards, I realized that the black threads were A-B-B-A, A-B-B-A. So, you know, that just says ABBA to me. And it's from Mommin, so, you know, these things just name themselves. So at this point, it is nicely anchored. All of the uh, threads seem to be in place. If you feel more comfortable, you could do another full rotation forward to really kind of settle things out, but I'm comfortable enough to start as it is. So cards number seven, eight, nine, and 10 will need to go backwards. So you can just look at the numbers seven, eight, nine, and 10 and push those back toward you. And those will turn toward you this way and the rest will turn forward. Now this is the time when you really need your pencil, or in this case, a meat skewer. Pull the thread from the loop, leave a loop behind, and repeat for pick number two. Again, because this is a, a skip hole weave, it's going to be doing everything in pairs. Everything is repeated. 
Smokey can hear me talking out here, and he wants to get involved. Okay. Oh, one thing I don't have is my ruler. Grab that. Always good to use a ruler to follow along with your pattern so you don't get lost. I'm going to put it above. I'm going to scoot it up a little bit further. Okay. So now all the cards are going to do the opposite, except for the border cards. So three, four, five, six will go backwards. Seven, eight, nine, ten forwards. And what will we do? Eleven through fourteen backwards. Turn those backwards cards backwards. Hold those forwards cards forwards. Border cards will continually turn forward until they get over twisted. And then we'll flip those and those will untwist. Ooh, a pattern is forming. Everybody excited yet? down, pull the loop, leave the loop behind, and the next one. Okay, so three, four are going to go forward, five, six back, 11, 12 back, and those two forward. This is going to seem super easy after that Estonian weave with the 184 picks to the repeat. Holy cow. This is still not quite right. Hmm, okay. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to with these differently shaped cards, different texture, different size holes, different size skewer. Everything is different, except the yarn. And same thing. Pick seven and eight are the same as five and six. Okay, oh, pick nine and ten. Oh, not quite the same. Uh, these two cards are going backwards. Everybody can see okay? Yep. Okay. And 11 and 12. Alright, so we've got 3, 4 back, 5, 6 forward, and that one back, 2 forward, and 2 back. Those ones forward. Carefully thread that through. It sounds like my son is downstairs making pasta. It's about lunchtime on Friday. My youngest is an aspiring chef.
He's 16 and he cooks so many different things. It's really fun. Three, four, six, and two back. And goes forward. Okay. And I think, I think this pattern is going to be a zero twist pattern. That is, you're not going to end up with twist buildup anywhere except for the border cards. And those you can just flip, go the other direction, and they will untwist. So I think this is going to be um, one of those ones that you're not going to have to chase the twist and untie the knots, or use fishing swivels, or um, worry about having to warp weight instead of using your loom. But we will double check that when we get to the end of this one. Or the end of the repeat. Four back, two forward, all back except for the border card. Oh, this is turning out so nice. I really love this pattern. Okay, so we got four forward, two back, four forward, and two back. I think the tension's a little tight, so I'm going to loosen that up a bit. Oh, that's much better. Two forward, two back. Two forward, two back, four forward, and two back. And turn again. We are almost done with this repeat. Number 22. Yeah, there's 24 repeats or 24 lines, picks, 24 picks. There's 24 picks in this repeat. Two forward, two back, two forward, four back, two forward, two back, and two forward. I guess I mumble to myself when I do this. It's okay. And last one, two forward, two back, two forward, four back, two forward, two back. So today is the 18th. I'd like to have this piece done by the 24th. That's my goal. Can I get it done in a week? Yeah, yeah, I think I can. 
I'm thinking I might have this done in about three days. That'll be nice. All right, that is the end of the first repeat. This looks so nice. I'm going to give you guys a close-up. Too close. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Oh, there it is. That's even better.